Hey friends, welcome back to the 1010 Book Club channel. Today we are listening to Evelyn Tan on her journey in non-fiction book writing. How you can convert your knowledge and experience into ideas for your book and then the ideas into actual self-published book. Hey friend, if you are new here, my name is Billy Chan. I am a passionate learner based in Penang, Malaysia. And on this channel, we explore interesting books, insightful knowledge and tools that enable us to learn more and get wiser. In this session, Evelyn Tan is going to tell the story of her journey as a self-published non-fiction book author in Malaysia. Short facts about Evelyn Tan, she served as a quality engineering supplier management professional in several multinational companies like Dell, Plexus and Honeywell. She holds a master's degree of science in industrial technology and she is also a certified Six Sigma Black Belt trainer, a lean practitioner and a project management professional. She had written four books related to her experience in supply management, manufacturing process, application of the various approaches in lean, quality innovations, digital marketing to outsmart the competitors. Let's dive in now. Good morning, everyone. For me to be able to give this talk to a prestigious book club, 1010 book club in Intel. I didn't know that there's a book club exists and I'm very happy to be able to interact with the members of the book club here. So today I'm going to talk about an author's journey to write a non-fiction book. I think after reading so many books, I'm sure every participant here would like to know more about the behind scenes on how a book is being written. So, I would like to ask everyone here, do you have a message which will impact the world? Yeah, let me introduce myself. I'm Evelyn Tan and I'm a quality and management professional where I've served the corporate world in multiple industries such as food, electronics and aerospace for the past 30 years. These are some of the companies which I have served in, which include Dell, Honeywell, and also Plexus. My career has progressed from an engineer to a management position over the time. And now, after I have retired from the corporate world last year, and now I'm a book author, a course designer, a Udemy instructor and also a consultant. So you can see all these books that I've written. So far I've written four books which are published in Amazon and also in the ebooks platform such as Apple Book, Barnes & Noble, Kubo Book and also is available in lulubook.com. So my area of expertise is actually in engineering Six Sigma Lean Manufacturer Management, Strategic Planning, Project Management, and I'm also doing some career consulting using Ikigai and Life Energy. A major part of my career is spent as a supplier quality management person for the past 17 years, where I have the privilege to travel the world visiting suppliers, supplying parts to the company I serve all over the world from Asia to America to South America and have access to be able to manage suppliers like Samsung, LG, Toshiba, Sony, Sanyo, Panasonic, Foxconn and also Flextronics. My passion is in training. So during the time when I served in the organization, I also volunteered to become a trainer where I have conducted over 25 trainings in quality management and lean tools all over the years across the globe from Penang 
to Brazil, US and China. So I also like to share my knowledge. I have two websites, one YouTube channel and also a Udemy course, a few Udemy courses that's available. It will be more over time in all these platforms. Do visit my websites and also YouTube channel. Yeah, let's begin with the with your with how we wanted to start to write a book. Everyone went through a very unique journey, either professionally, personal, or spiritual. So when we go through this journey, we will have a lesson or experience which can be shared, a knowledge or maybe a story, a life story which wanted to share. So the book will be the best way to share these lessons or experience where you could leave those learning to your next generation and also leave a legacy. There are several reasons why someone wants to write a book. It could be for profitability, profit, profitability that where you can get profitable trending platform when you use a scraping software to scrape Amazon's list. Okay, so here people will just do a research on those trending, trending profit, um, trending topic and package it into a book. For me, this is a book that really without a soul. It's just that cut and paste information from here and there to become a book. Next is reputations where you want to establish yourself as an authority or you want to share your learning and also it will be enable you to open doors. And also life story to share. It could be something that is entertaining, motivational or a lesson learned that you will help other people. And the best is the mix of all or some of them. For me, when I write a book, it's actually more for sharing and also to sort of establish myself as an authority and helps me to gain my foot in a certain field of expertise. A book is actually a storehouse of a single knowledge and you have to have a clarity when you write a book. First of all, you must understand the subject matter and what you want to write on. It could be professional or it could be your hobby, something that you are interested in. For example, some people they like to build model, model cars, model plane. So it could also turn into a book and niche it down to who the audience you wanted to work or your target audience. For example, if you have an engineering book, engineering is quite wide. So you niche it down. It could be for those mechanical or mechanical design and you could even go down further to maybe geometry, tolerance related. What are the lessons learned in those areas that you can share? And what will your reader gain from your book? Is it to solve certain problem? By reading your book, it will help them to solve certain problem or learn how to do new things or motivate them Maybe they could lead a healthier lifestyle or have some sharing or some tips on healing as well. So please ensure that both purpose of writing the book 
And what your reader will gain is your top list when you have the intention to do so. A lot of people ask me whether we should start to have a book title first before we write a book. There's really no right or wrong answer. Some authors could start with a title to guide the book. Others could write the book content first based on your purpose, your target audience, and what your readers will gain from the last slide, which I have talked about, and then give it a more suitable title, a title with maybe a zinc in it. You actually can have a title and tweak it later to your content. This is what my practice is. And how do you get started in a book content? Because a lot of people say that they will have some difficulties in packaging the contents they have because our brains process so many things all at once. Number one is that I would advise you to put in your life journey or everything in a note form, maybe in a journal, write it down. For example, like me, I usually have a morning routine and after my one of my morning routines that after I have done my yoga, I will meditate or uh, do some quiet thinking time. This is where the ideas flows in and I will have some notes and paper with me and I will write down those ideas accordingly. Secondly, is that your a subject matter experts where you have knowledge in certain subjects and you have experience in applying it and how you apply it to achieve certain success. You can also put it down as well in a journal and your experience in life, it may be in your personal life, something interesting happens such as parenting, and you can write it down, or through research. So these are the four ways where you can roughly get the frame or the book content. Next is after you already have the content and the framework, still you will need to do more writing because a book is not thin, at least it should be about 40 to 50 pages. And your idea, once you start to organize yourself towards that goal, your head will work in a way, or your brains, or your mind will work in a way that the inspiration ideas come in a moment which related to the topic that you already have in mind. You will need to write down all those ideas and sometimes it could be out of nowhere, maybe in a restaurant, you write it in the napkin and handy tools that you can also, once you have write down, you can also sort of organize it in the notebook apps, such as OneNote or Evernote. And then you have to learn how to express the writing in a form of energy. And you have to let your reader to feel the energy feel or the energy that you are trying to transmit to your reader. So with all this purpose in mind, you should have the content and you should have the writing. Okay. Any, any questions so far? So, so yes. for, for writing the ideas in, sometimes we have a lot of ideas. So, and uh, what what is your take about um, getting just the? I mean, there's there's two two things here. One is that the points, the content is not enough. Number two, we have too many contents, and how can we structure the content into the writing properly? Okay, first of all, you just write as the rough a scribble first, and then after that, maybe you go to. This is how I do it. I go to my OneNote apps. Um, this is where I go high tech. I have OneNotes. And then um, inside, I will start to organize and compartment 
prioritize those content accordingly that this belongs to here, that means you must have at least an idea on the subsection or on the structure. And this, you must have, at, I, I told you that first you start with the niche that you want, the, the main topic or the, or the content should center on what topic. And after that, you just branch it out that, you know, the subtopic one, subtopic two, subtopic three. And when you have all these things, then you can also organize your thought accordingly to that subtopic as well. And the idea will come, uh, you must train your mind. Uh, if you learn about mind mapping, you must train your mind to think about, you know, compartmentize those ideas very systematically. Okay. Yeah. So far, right, anyone thanks. has... Yeah. yeah, anyone has other questions? Okay, allow me to proceed if none. Okay, so I think this is what is more on how to organize your thought so that you must structure, yeah, once you have a topic, you must structure your thoughts into several subtopics because it should be flow from one chapter to another. So it, it, it's like organize it in a way that your reader can digest. Flow one idea to another idea seamlessly. That means from one chapter to another chapter, you can see that um, authors, they organize their books. Maybe, you know, I am by those like chapters. So it must flow from one to another. Okay. And then carry the reader from the beginning to the end to deliver a, a, a core message of the book. Okay. Yeah. So, your content must allow the reader to internalize. That means into your world. You must bring the reader into your world and let them respond and also react and finally sort of transform them. This is actually very good in those fiction books. Some books after you read, you, you can cry. So you, you know, they, the, the author has managed to carry you into their world. You have sort of internalized and some books after you read, it motivates you to transform. So far, I wouldn't say that I'm that type of author yet. I have not gone to that stage of doing everything yet. Okay, it needs a very high stage. So I, I don't claim that I'm an expert author, but I'm just learning a novice. Okay, and next, after you write the book, definitely you want to find a platform where everybody can And this one is more on traditional book publishing. It has this good point, and there are also some downfall to it. So in traditional book publishing, mm. so in let me just walk you through the traditional book publishing process. So 
in here, normally the author will just write a few chapters and draft and they will show it to their agents. Because in the past, it's actually very difficult to publish a book. You need to actually connect to these people. But however, this book publisher will use the agent as a gatekeeper. That means they will not publish your book directly unless you own the publishing company or you have good connection with the publishing company, unlike today. So they are all the gatekeeper. And once you have those manuscript ready, you don't have to do anything. Do, do not worry about those processes that I walk you through, like editing, proofreading, book cover design, and even marketing. You don't have to do that because the publisher will do everything for you. You just need to have the manuscript. That is all. And they will start to sell your book on, in the stores. Okay. However, the only thing is that it also comes with a price. Your book royalty is only about 10%. This publisher will keep everything. It's like a producer model. As people say, the producer will get the most. In self-publishing, like what I'm doing today is that I do everything end to end, okay? And then I will find a platform, an online platform to publish the book. So the royalty could range from anything at least about 30 to 70%. That depends on them. And self publishing actually is made possible because of POD technology. What's POD? Print on demand. In the past, books, when you publish anything, you have to do typesetting. So it's actually a very long and tedious process to set up the Typesetting. That's why people, you know, when you when you want to publish something, people will ask you, even the flyer, people will ask you that why is that they have an MOQ, minimum order quantity. That means that the more you publish, the more quantity, the cheaper it will be because of the typesetting process. In print of demand, thanks to HP Hewlett Packard, that they have come up with a machine almost like similar like Xerox machine. And you can print any quantity of the book that you want accordingly from the soft copy. And it does not have to have, you know, a minimum quantity at least. And the machine itself can even do the book binding for you. So this is where this technology has eliminated a lot of book publishing. If you know that some of the publishing, like big pu publisher like Random House, McGraw Hill, that we know of, uh, they have already sort of merged and, and they are getting less and less. Those six bigs in New York, they have already like merged and it's getting less and less because authors prefer to do their self-publishing because if you wait for a publisher to do the marketing for you, they will only invest on those big names author. Okay. Hey, uh, Evelyn, can I ask a question? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think for the sake of uh, me to get to know about uh, the royalty of 70%, is it uh, minus, minus cost, uh, like your, your costing all, you, you minus and then the 70%. And based on your experience, like if you convert it to a average book, uh, how is the dollar and cents will look like? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, royalty is actually after minus of the cost. 30% is for your platform owners, like people like Amazon and all these things, and all these publishers, they will take about 30% and maybe you get to keep 70% the net. And what is the dollars and cents? Actually, it will depend on how well your book performs. That's the most important thing. If you sell one, that means one or needle, and you can get to detect the price of your book also. That means that one book, how much you want to sell for ebooks? Actually, Amazon um, has a minimum, has a maximum ceiling price, especially for you know, um, for just new authors or for those normal authors, they have like a, a ceiling price that you cannot sell beyond certain price. Okay. 
I have one follow up question. The third example, I just wanted to promote myself. I, I give the book for free. So it's, a, it, it's zero, right? So so Amazon are going to do a free service for me if my, the book myself is zero. Um, OK. <laughs> you have to buy the book at the cost price and author's copy at a cost price from Amazon. And then you can, you know, you can put it in where you want to send it to but Amazon will charge you a delivery charge. That means it will not be the normal price that it shows. It will be your author copy price. That's a cost price. All right, okay, got it, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah interesting. Yeah, okay. So I also have downloaded um, a video on this guy. We have all those 10 to 11 steps of the, what, the, what an author generally generally go through and some of the works actually you can outsource some you do not have to outsource if you can do it on your own i do most part of it on your own in, my, in fact actually my first book cover was also i was designed by somebody else i outsource it but later on i also designed my own book cover as well even till the book today let me just go through the author's challenges first after you have published a book, the biggest challenge is actually to get a book review that people feeds back on your book so that when there's feedback means that there's response on your book and it will rank your book higher or so. And it will be easier for people to see your book. That is your challenge. And also the next one is to reach your target audience. If you already have like a community or a trap, a tribes, you build a community, then it will be easier for you to reach the target audience that you want to reach. For example, like my book, the latest book on corporate world and beyond, I am starting to build communities like people, those people in the professional world, and also so that they can, you know, have, they can know that there's such book and you also can help them with the contents. Remember, our contents is to help our reader. Okay. So you have to you have to learn to do marketing as well. So let me just talk about book in this new era because we are already in an era where there's so many online platforms, as I said. So actually, I would say that book is still the main source of knowledge and entertainment. Okay, it's more flexible. You don't need an electricity unless you read an ebook. You really do not need one. And it has accountability and the credibility of an author for a book. And actually, it's a storehouse of a single topic, comprehensive and specific. So, this is a quote that I've taken from Notre Fright. I do not know how many of you have heard of him. He's actually a Canadian literary critic. He also writes some books of his own, but I find that he has already passed away. I find that this is something that is very good, a, a quote that's very good. The most technologically efficient machine that man has ever invented is a book. So do you agree or not? It's actually an open discussion. But so far, do you do, do you guys have any questions? Uh, Elaine, there's, there's, there's no question. Uh, even in the chat, we have no question there. Yeah, if, if, if there is, I will let you know. Ah, OK, OK. So can we open the floor for an open discussion on this one? Um, anyone wants to debate or everybody agrees that um, book is the most efficient machine that man has ever invented? Anyone? Any comments? Yeah, I no. Just, just uh, you have triggered me to think about this, right? I think, I think this is this is very crucial. How, how human are different with uh, other other beings in this world? As 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 quoted by Yuval Harari in his Sapiens book, he mentioned about uh, why human can be so successful. And one thing is that we able to. Um, pass this kind of information to the next generation that we have. And I know, uh, first of all, when human existed, I don't believe that uh, writing is there. 
because like when my uh, a kid is born, the first thing they do is they know how to talk first. They know how to talk E R E R, and then they will start to recognize alphabets or writings. And I felt that this is how invention of human to put the writings in the book and make it transferable. The the knowledge is transferable. And um, yep, uh, which is which is a good things and uh, I, perhaps a good tools is the uh, creation of words and writings. Yeah, my my thought. <laughs> mm, yes, actually, people are trying to transfer knowledge through writing, even in the ancient times. Maybe in the very old old age, um, where you have caveman writings in mm. the cave, mm. so they are trying to transfer. Yeah. They are trying to transfer something, but except that last time paper was not discovered. I think China is the one that discovered the paper, and yeah. you start writing on the on the paper. I, I I I if we trace back to the history of mankind, mm. Mm. okay, and so many things can be transferred through a book. I Maybe mean, a Bible is also a book, right? Hmm. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why when you say writing a book, we also wanted to see how can uh, one of us, we, we have a, the, the, the bow there and uh, very, very excited, you know, as one of my motivation is that uh, like I say, transfer this to yourself in the future or transfer it to someone in your family or your friends that you might not able to wait so long to meet them, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Maybe your grandchildren or your great great grandchildren will be able to read about what you have read or about your life journal. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. With this, I also would like to have, I would like to sort of share my books with you all. You can download a chapter of this book in this QR code, but actually I do have a present for all the people here that attended the call. I have already compiled my talks in a notes format, in a PDF format, okay? And I can sort of share it with y'all, what I have for you all. This is the notes that I have. I believe I'll send it to you all later on, on right. the compilations. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I will um, uh, compile uh, everything uh, and put yeah. it in the in the group. Uh, in the in the YAML group. Yeah. Uh, probably is easier way for for people to uh get the information from there. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and please do connect with me through linking. I would love to have more connection on linking. Okay, and also I have a hashtag. I always write articles and posts. I also have websites. In fact, actually, I started with writing for, in the websites. Then I progressed into a book. This is how I started and my Telegram group as well. And finally, so I think, Billy, um, that is it for me, for my sharing. Any questions from the floor? I will be very happy to answer. Yeah, um, Evelyn, this, this, this one mental um, mm -hmm. mm. Anyone is talking? No, 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 Billy, go ahead. Uh, uh, later, I have one question to ask Evelyn. Okay. Okay. okay sure. So, sure. Uh, one one mental thing that uh uh I have or probably a lot of and uh, to overgeneralize a lot human or engineers have is that we always think um to make a very a a very good pro a very good outcome of book. Uh, it need to be very complex, you know. Uh, like humans say that uh, the more complex they are, the output will be more cool. So this, this at least is what I say. But what you have mentioned about is all this simplification of the process. So how how is your mentality to overcome this and say, oh, uh, and and to have just enough things in the book or or the way of you structure and write it to make to make sure that it's understandable or how go beyond that complex is much always better, is it? Okay, um, this is like my personal experience because every one of us are different. As I said that having been in the lean mindset, I always like to simplify things. I simplify the process. I simplify, you know, even Six Sigma that is very complex. I also simplify that I can explain Six Sigma within 10 minutes. 
that is what I, I can do because you just catch the, the, the core of it. The most important thing is that when you want to simplify something is that what is an end message? What is a core message to the reader? And from there, you will just put in the right amount of information in order to deliver that message. Because sometimes actually less is more. Like my books actually is not very thick. It's quite thin. I, I like thin books. Okay, so I also write very thin books because people can easily read it, understand it, and also finish the book and get the message. There are sometimes people that love, and maybe some of you love very thick books. I'm not really a big fan of thick books. Um, those thick books I have, I have books this thick, I use it as a reference. So you will need to sort of, when you, and when you have such things that I want to simplify it, and I want to keep to the direction, the most important thing, your goal, your purpose, and your direction, then it will already give you the simplification. The clarity is very important. Remember my first 10 slides, the first thing I talk about, it's your clarity of the book itself. Thank you, Evelyn. And uh, Lin Guan, uh, you want to go ahead your questions? Evelyn. Yeah, Evelyn, going through the corporate world, I'm just wondering, just by observation, every company and um, we, I think the uh, some leaders would wanted to pass down their experience to the youngest one uh, or younger generation leaders or even engineers. But I don't. I think they would have a challenge to write a book of the chronology of projects or even their their so called a uh, journey. Uh, you you have people like a uh, prolific writer to write up um, biography for great leaders like Steve Jobs and people like that. But in our this practical side, uh, we also have local leaders that we wanted to get their, their thoughts or experience before they retire. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think many of them write their own biography or even the chronology of the projects they have led or even leads. So I wonder, do you see a, a need for a corporate to hire a writer <laughs> to capture this type of learnings from leaders before they they uh, retire. Not many were able to retire like you, <laughs> but uh, we also don't <laughs> want the the um, those um, experience being uh, just go away. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Okay, actually there are several ways to write the book. Let me just share with you. I put it in the notes here. Let me just flash out the screen and then at least you will get a good idea. I'm um, hiring a writer could be a good idea as well. It could be one of the ways. There are many, many approach to do this. Hold on for a while. Huh? Yes. Okay. So the methods to write a book. One way is that, hopefully I can answer Lingguan's question in this way. One way is to write on your own. Some people, they can, it's true, I agree. Some people, they can write quite well. Another way is actually to work with an author. That means to hire a writer, or you can hire a ghost writer, and then, like the guy just now, our rescue me from my job guy is hire a writing coach or you can collaborate with a friend. So it depends on the organization because organization, they're quite structured. They could have their own way of design. It, 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 it could be that it's, it, it could be that we can always influence our management to set up maybe or to hire a writer together and work with the top leaders in the corporate really to write what they have. It is actually a lot of good knowledge will be lost if it's not documented, right? So this is one of the ways that you could do a good idea to hire a writer or even, you know, um, hire just a writing coach because nowadays a lot of corporate people, they also hire coach, right? To coach on a career. Why not? We also have like writing coach as well to document down all the good works so that it can be passed down to the next generation. Does that answer your question, Lingguan? Yeah, okay. But um, did you see for the corporate that you've been working, um, um, has it been implemented or not yet? I, I don't see it here yet, but uh, maybe a thought uh, proposal to bring back to the management <laughs> to, to consider this. 
Uh, yes, so far, actually, this idea is quite fresh. I mm. don't think any corporate will ever think of that yet. Because as we are, as the world is getting more and more online, and it's also that, you know, a lot of people might have a lot of good experiences to share already. So it will be, you know, it, 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 maybe some, some, some creative company might be a pioneer in this mm -hmm. area. Or some people, maybe, you know, some top management, maybe they retired, they decided also to put their knowledge to use in consultancy or in elsewhere as well. So it's like, you know, a sharing of knowledge. Okay. Hey, Lim Guan, that is really a very good project. Uh. I think uh, we can have some chat with that to see how to make that and what to make. <laughs> I think it's a very, very interesting project. <laughs> we can bring it back to Eric and, and I think Suresh is on this call to, to see whether <laughs> oh <my laughs> they, they would consider that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> Look at it. Yeah, I, I, I felt that uh, one, one step ahead and, and, um, and, and uh, yeah, just a very good project. But, uh, a very good project is not we like the outcome, but actually we need to like the process to get to the outcome. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Thanks, Ibi. Okay. Question. Okay, so, um, yeah. Any more questions? Any discussion? Anything that you wanted to share with me? Okay, so maybe, um, Billy, it would be good that if we can check if our participants, our attendees here, would like to bring this further into something yeah. like a writing workshop? I Yeah, I, I, I did have a thought on that one also just now, uh, Evelyn, is that, um, you know, we always think about the book club is a place for some speaker or even our internal folks, right, who read the book and then they share about the book. But it would be quite cool uh, if people can also write their own books, right? So, yeah. and, and, um, I, I do not know how many people will uh, resonate uh, with that. So, okay, uh, let me put a... Oh, Any stuff from you, Evelyn? Okay, I think I would like to thank the team here for joining this meeting, this session by me. I hope that you all have some key takeaways from this session yeah. and also our relationship, our relationship should be continued on. Do connect with me in linking, and I will appreciate if you guys also can give me an opportunity to read my books and also, you know, have a discussion around my books as well. Thank you very much. All right, hey, thanks, Evelyn. All right, I hope that you enjoyed the session and learned something today. If you enjoyed this video and care about learning, and hearing a summary of books from other experienced authors and speakers, check out the video over here where you can learn the storytelling in book writing with Siti Hanbiza. If you love this video, do tune in and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.